This time on Pedalbox, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff off of AID's 10% list right here. There's an old saying in software where I work, and probably in a whole bunch of other industries as well, that the last 10% of a project can easily take as long as the first 90%. Now, you might look at this and think it's not 90%. I can assure you it's actually pretty well close to complete. We've got most of the stuff uh, all good and working. But we do have at least 10% of the work left on our hands. And if that takes as long as the 90% that we've already done, we've got a problem, because that would have us finishing in probably sometime around 2027, which... I've got to be honest, I don't really fancy a 10-year project, and I don't think AID does either. So, in hoping to buck the trend, we've put together a list of most of the things that we think are needed to get kind of the, the, the main next tasks on our list. And we're calling this the 10% list. Um, this is kind of unfair because what you're seeing is not everything that needs to be done. There's actually quite a lot of other stuff besides. But this is what we're going to try and tackle as soon as we can. I'm not going to say today because it's too much for today, but in the near future. We've got like cleaning up edges and adding a new weld here and there and finishing up some little bits and pieces and putting small frames in and that. There's all really, really little things uh, and it's probably not going to make for a very cohesive episode. I think we've called these bitsers before because it's bits of this and bits of that. So uh, you're going to basically wind up on a bit of a tour around the car with us as we refinish here and redo there. So it could be a pretty fun one, it could be nice and varied or it might just be lots of cutting and grinding. We, uh, well, I guess we'll find out as we go. Now, for no particular reason, other than we want it to look nice, we're going to start with a bit more sheet metal. So we're going to fill this big old hole right here. Now, as with the rest of the cars, we need to build a bit of framework and then we'll attach the skin onto it. Here's our framework. It goes somewhere about here. And to get this bottom front corner in exactly the right place, we're going to take our front air curtain corner piece here, bolt it all up and then just match it to this point on that corner. So I'm going to bolt this in now, figure out where everything has to go and then we'll start welding. panel in and as usual a little bit of warp in it so we're going to pop it outwards so that all the dishes are kind of in one direction the same as it was on the other side. I think I might actually have worked out where this is all coming from in all of our different pieces of metal. Normally when you're attaching bodywork to bodywork it's thin steel to thin steel so you do little tiny low power welds, series of little tack welds all the way along and nothing really gets too much heat in it. But because we're welding onto big uh, tubes of, of steel, there's a lot more mass there, a lot more heat in it. And I think what's been happening is we have to put more heat in to get into the, uh, into the metal rods. And all of that heat ends up distorting everything. It's just a guess, but it feels about right. But this is in, we've mostly flatted back the welds. We're gonna smooth the rest over with Bondo because to be honest, we're getting a little bit lazy with how we're cleaning these and it seems fine. Uh, and then prime over it and um, yeah, looking pretty good for now. Uh, we've also had to use a uh, ratchet strap onto the back of the chassis here just to pull all of this back into alignment. So we're going to take the tension out of it now and see where it sits. Well, that's all together. The paint's on. We're just waiting for that to dry. So while we wait for that, we're going to move down the car and down the list a bit. We've finished off a few more welds and tidied up on the driver's side into cooler pod panel seam. So that's one more off the list. Now we're going to move even further down. We're going to jump onto the driver wing mirror cutout. So that's the notch we need to take out of here to match what we've got on the passenger side. So Aid is going to stick his ears on and start cutting. <laughs> Now 
is all well and good having a nice big long list of things that you can cross off and get that endorphin rust of, yay, I actually did the thing. But if you're in the middle of something like say, the dashboard framing, and you ignore it, you're just gonna have to add it onto the end of the list. And having been going around the car, there are enough things we're gonna have to add onto that list already that aren't included at the moment, which is a little bit disappointing. But what we might as well do now is get the framing done on the dashboard ready for the panels. And there's gonna be two panels going from obviously this edge all the way across to the instrument cluster, and another one that goes from the driver's side edge right the way around and dips underneath it. So the, um, the one on the driver's side should probably need to come off less, so this one's gonna overlap on top of it. And it should have, or it will have, some little plastic clips that basically just pop into place and it'll hold it underneath, uh, hold it from underneath in a, in a friction fit um, on this framework. And it'll just tuck into the side and we'll put a little bracket in. So it should work fairly simply. Now I need to remember which way around these frames go in because I took them off and I didn't number them which was a really really stupid idea so I recommend you number things or mark things up some way that you can remember what order they go in particularly when two of them are very similar and well this one as you can see is a little bit long for this side and it's also a little bit long for this side so I'm reasonably certain of the order but I need to go through align them all again make sure that they're right and then we can weld these in and then start cutting the panels. So now we've got all the frame installed, I've actually added in another rib on this side just to support this edge of the dashboard panel right up against the windscreen. So now we can actually put the two panels in. Now these are both made of 0.9mm aluminium and sorry if this uh, blinds you, it's going to blind me an awful lot more when the sun hits it. And these basically are a friction fit against the lowest portion of the windscreen surround and this one is a friction fit against this rib on the left hand side. So. That just fits in like that, and I'll just put a, a grip on this end for the time being. So that holds in really nicely across there. And then the panel on this side is just another piece of aluminium, and it tucks in in much the same way. And I'll just throw a grip on there. And I definitely can't see anything now, so I might actually take this panel out for the next bit. Okay, so now I'm not being completely blinded, I'll move on to the next part of the installation, which is some extra panels to sit on the inside corners just to cover up all of the inside of the A-pillar on this side, but also provide an edge to friction fit the um, or compress down the outside edge of the dashboard. So basically I don't need this clamp in anymore and it will hold it in place because this is fairly well anchored at this point between this rib down here and it's only this side that's loose. So I have this uh, roughly triangular shaped, it's a bit more of a shark fin really, shaped piece of steel and this just goes in along this side. And if I take this clamp out, it fits in like that. Now admittedly, you can't see that very well, and I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to install this one and you'd be able to see it better, but I've had to take this panel out so I can actually see it. So just imagine that the panel is in, and basically this fits in just across there, and we're going to weld it in at the very front edge here, obviously along the inside edge, and this will go down onto the very forward corner of our quarter light window, so that will just go in there. And those two panels will finish off most of the dashboard area across the top. And then later on, we're going to cover these with foam and put some material over them, and that will give them all of the um, requirements for the, uh, the inspection that we need. We can't have any sharp edges, they have to be rounded over, so we're going to use a little bit of rubber on the edge, and then foam on top of that, and then wrap them in material, and then they won't be sharp, and that panel's just gone away in the wind. <laughs> One sec. Oh, oh. I was holding it in the wrong place, wasn't I? <laughs> oh, aid. I'm going to try. Got it? 
Yeah, so we go in there. All right, you good? Mm hmm. Got it. Cool. And then. Yeah. Uh, okay, oh, if I you go, go that there, there, more of a gap. there I can first. Do, I can do here. Yeah. Okay. And then, you got and then to... yeah, I'll get that one. There you go, just a bit more. So alongside working on the dash, because it's been a one-person job quite a few times this weekend, I've been going around the car doing a couple of bits and pieces. So we've tidied up the bonnet hinges. These are... This is one of them, I can't remember which left or right, the other one's somewhere over there safe. And the only reason they're not on quite yet is because the bonnet isn't being reattached because we're still working on that. We've got a whole load of like Bondo to do and everything to smooth it back out. Annoyingly, that's not even on the list. So while we've taken one job off of here, I can't see where it is. Ah, here we are. We've got the bonnet hinge and mount cleanup. That can come off and we've got one more to go back on the bottom now. So maybe a, a net zero there. Moving on. Further back of the car, we've taken a big bite out of here, ready for the wing mirror to go in. So we've scalloped in around there nice. We've got a nice hole, just the right shape for the mirror to drop down on there. Now we do still have a little bit more work to do, a little bit more polishing and tweaking and stuff on that, but it's mostly looking pretty good. We've cleaned up the rear face here, and we've also finished seam welding this big panel on here and sort of cleaned up a lot of the weld that we had on there. So that's all looking a lot better. And that means I can scrub off, where are we? To speed up through this a little bit. Uh, yep, driver's wing mirror cut out and driver pod rear seam. We've also cleaned up both of the seams on here where the front wing panel met the side panel and up at the very very top here with the quarter light. I also found from A today this is called a quarter light. I hate it but I accept it. Uh, we've cleaned up all over the top here because that was looking kind of messy where that had all gone together so I can cross off that and I can cross off that. I'm just getting rid of ink more than putting any down, but here we go. And while we were looking at this, I've also just remembered that we've also done the seatbelt bolt that was stuck in the chassis under there. So I had to drill out a bunch of rivets, take a plate off. And Now I described this list as all the stuff that we have 10% of left. So we've done 90% of something and this is the remaining 10%. Now using some very advanced and scientific rigorous mathematics here, we can say that the, 200, the 21 things on here represent 210% of the whole project. Now we've done, I think, nine of them, which means we've done 90% of the project, and that means we still have 120% left to do. So um, I guess we've still got plenty left on our plates. And that's not counting the stuff we haven't put on the list yet, and there is some of that. It's all in, not a bad weekend. It was a big list that we didn't expect to finish, but we've taken quite a few items off it. I think we've done nearly half of them. So we're gonna call that a win and I'm gonna go back to Wales. And I'm really happy with how the dashboard's come out. I've been putting off doing this for quite some time because I just didn't know how I was gonna do it. I've gone through a few different ideas for how to make these panels. One using like laminated plastic sheets and gluing them in so that they maintain the shape. But actually the ribs going across and then this um, aluminium sheet just being pinned in place really seems to be working quite well. Now, if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel, like the video, let us know what you think of the shape of the dashboard and everything else that we've been doing. You can support us at shop.pedalbox.show by buying merch. We've got t-shirts, hats, and more. And you can also go to patreon.com forward slash pedalboxshow, and you can support us there from as little as a dollar a month. We will see you next time when hopefully we'll get more things off that 10% list and probably add a bunch more on as well.